When we went to Washington, D.C., Bill McKibben said that all he ever wanted was to see a movement to fight climate change, and here it is. So let's all get started. I'd like to welcome to the stage our first speaker, Beth Wallace. Beth is from the National Wildlife Federation, and she did the policy work on a paper that was the inspiration for this rally. Amazing. The report is co-authored by Jeff Alexander, and it's called Sunken Hazard, Aging Oil Pipelines Beneath the Straits of Mackinac, an Ever-Present Threat to the Great Lakes. She works on the energy and climate teams providing community organization outreach for the National Wildlife Federation and is lead organizer for the Great Lakes Regional Center's response to the Kalamazoo River oil spill, working to ensure proper response and accountability. Last August, Bill McKibben named Beth Wallace one of his heroes in the fight against tar sands pipelines. Beth Wallace, everybody. I first want to thank Through 50 for all the really, really hard work they put into getting this off the ground. They contacted me a few months ago and I'm like, yeah, I'd speak at a rally. Although that's not exactly where we saw our report Sunken Hazard going. It's definitely one of the best things that have hap has happened to it. And so I really appreciate all the work they've put behind this. As mentioned, I'm with the National Wildlife Federation Great Lakes office, which is in Ann Arbor. And I work on the climate and energy teams, but mostly I work on pipeline safety issues and response to the Marshall spill in, uh, um, in the uh, Kalamazoo River that happened two years ago. I, I want to uh, first take a few moments to kind of give people an understanding about what we're dealing with here. After all, that was the point of our report, Sunken Hazard, which you, you can get a copy of over there. It was to first educate people that a pipeline even existed. As we experienced with the Marshall incident uh, into the Kalamazoo River, many people had no idea that that pipeline even existed. And so if, my one request, if you do one, is to go home and just tell your neighbors about this issue and about the concerns so that they understand that that pipeline, the two pipelines, exists right in that location. And it's literally just off of the pier right there. So I want to first give people a background on Embridge and their history because in the last week I've been going back and forth, as many people here have as well, kind of debating with Embridge their history. And, and they seem to think that they have one of the safest pipeline networks in the region. And so I just want to kind of lay out the groundwork here for why we are concerned about this pipeline. November 1999, Crystal Falls, just a little bit west of here, 226,000 gallons spilled out of line five, and it caused a huge gas plume to go into a valley. In order to mediate the problem, em Embridge lit it on fire, had to evacuate people, lit it on fire. It burned for 36 hours and scorched eight acres. In 1999, has anyone heard about this? They called it the Lakehead system, and it's filed under the Lakehead instead of line five. So that's how construed this gets. So 2002 Lakehead system, 2000, 200,000 gallons spilled in Minnesota. February 2013, 5,462 gallons spilled in Toledo. October 2013, 21,000 gallons spilled in Bay County, Michigan. Another in Bay County, Michigan, 4,200 in 2005. 2007, 50,000 in Wisconsin. 2007 in February, 201,000 gallons. November 2007, two people killed. Unknown how much actually spilled in that incident because it did as it caught fire. 2010, January, 126,000 in North Dakota. And this is all the Lakehead system. July 2010, 1 million gallons approximately. It's still debatable. Marshall, Michigan. Um, I just want to take a second to note that 10 days prior to the Marshall incident in the Kalamazoo River, Emmerich was called to Congress. They were asking him a lot of tough questions about Line 6B, which is the line that burst, because they had issues throughout that they were largely ignoring in the hundreds. They called them anomalies, cracks, fusion, dents, whatever you want to call them. And Emmerich said at that time they can detect a leak instantaneously. Uh, that their system was in, in working order and that they would be able to detect it, shut it down, very little harm. 17 hours passed before someone with a utility company told them that they had spilled a million gallons. And it spilled in a, a wetland that overran 
a mile and a half of a creek, and then 40 miles total of Kalamazoo River Watershed Council. Okay. September 2010, 250,000 in Chicago. That was just after. And then last year, July 2012, Grand Marsh, this huge spill, uh, geyser of oil that hit cattle, a farm. After that spill, that was, that was it for FIMSA. They were mad. That, that was the breaking point. FIMSA issued a corrective action order, uh, and I quote, FIMSA has communicated its long-standing concerns about the pattern of failures with Embridge over the past several years. Given the nature, circumstances, and gravity of this pattern of accidents, additional corrective measures is warranted. Circumstances and gravity of the patterns and accidents, la da da da, continued operations without additional corrective measures would be a hazard to life, property, and the environment. This was issued in August of 2012. At the same exact time, Embridge was setting forth plans to expand the very pipeline that's in that network. And then they're expanding pipelines to the west of here, Line 67, Alberta Clipper. Line 6B, they're tripling the amount of capacity that'll run through that pipeline. At the same exact time, FIMSA has said that it's unsafe and they need to have corrective measures. There is something wrong with the way that we regulate pipelines, and that's what we outlined in our sunken hazard report, and that's how we want to educate the public, that there is a way to contact your representatives, FIMSA, the EPA, and tell them that it's enough at this point.